This is me, sifting through someone else's garbage on the side of the road. I've just hit the jackpot, a crushed set of cupboards yielding six large pieces of plywood. But this is not just hoarding without a cause. I was looking for this rubbish. You see, I have a bit of a tool storage problem. Specifically, I store a lot of my small tools down at the far end of the shop, the opposite end from where I do most of my work. Inevitably, this means they don't end up back where they're meant to be, and usually find their way to one of several piles instead. To remedy this, I'm going to make a machinist tool chest, or at least a project inspired by one. That's what the rubbish is for. I'm going to be using a laser cutter to turn this pile of garbage, destined for landfill not 12 hours after I found it, into something far more useful. By planning ahead, there's a lot of material I get away with not buying. In total, I got enough 4mm ply to fill the laser 30 times. Not bad for a pile of rubbish. For the sides of my chest, I would need something a little thicker and got lucky with some scrap 12mm ply, although less of it than I would have liked. With my materials found, I could finish up the design process. I'd already mapped out basically what I wanted based more on aesthetics rather than function. It's all about the proportions. I start with simple blocks, then cut these into flat material, and then add finger joints and other details. Even though I designed the chest in 3D, I have a plugin to export faces as 2D SVG files that can be read by the laser cutter. I'm going to be cutting the parts out on this Xtool S1 laser, which Xtool provided me with to make this video. I really like lasers, but I stopped using the last diode laser I had because of the fumes. It had no enclosure, and that's the main reason I accepted this Xtool sponsorship. The Xtool S1 is fully enclosed, so I can properly vent the fumes out of my shop. The cutting overall went pretty smoothly. I ran the 4mm ply at 100% power, 10mm a second speed. The 12mm took a bit of tweaking, but I eventually settled on 100% power, 5mm a second speed, 2 passes, and lowering the focus to 6mm. Because of the inconsistent hardware store plywood I was using, there were a few small spots that didn't cut all the way through, but overall it cut very well. In total the chest is made up of 80 laser cut pieces, most of which are for the drawers. Seven of these pieces make up the main chest body, and these were the first parts I decided to glue together. First though, I sanded all the pieces inside and out to 120 grit. This just gets rid of all the grime from the second hand wood. Then I could begin gluing. This went pretty smoothly overall, aside from putting in one piece upside down. I probably could have given myself slightly tighter tolerances, but overall it fit together nicely. The back did give me some problems with the corners sticking up, so I used some small nails to temporarily hold them down to dry. To save some time, at this point I also added wood putty in a few places where the second hand plywood was chipped or had screw holes. You can see clearly here that the finger joints actually all protrude past the box surface. This is intentional, I extended them here so later I can sand them flat to get a more uniform surface. While that was drying, 
I could get a few of the 12 drawers glued up. There are three sizes of drawers, but all have the same design. A finger jointed box with a base inset 1mm from the bottom for a bit of extra strength. The drawers all have a front that isn't aligned with anything to provide a cleaner look. I considered making a custom jig for the drawers to make the glue process easier, but thought it would be a bit wasteful. This led to the invention of my fix-it jig system that was the focus of my last video. With this system, I created a clamping setup that made gluing these drawers together far easier. Each drawer only took a couple of minutes to glue and clamp, but about 20 or 30 minutes to dry, so I chipped away at these while doing other work around the shop. A few hours later, the main case and putty was dry, and I could continue with adding the face and drawer dividers. This was a similarly smooth process. Some parts were a bit of a tight fit, but it all came together pretty well. The front facade was a bit more of a challenge. In the design I didn't want to hide the laser cut nature of the chest, but I didn't want it to look like a typical laser cut project either, hence the drawer fronts and this cover piece. Like the fingers, the front cover is 1mm wider than the box itself, so it had to be aligned from the inside. Getting it all set up needed a bit of finessing, but I got there in the end. With everything glued up and dry, I could get to sanding. The main chest needed the most work done by far, requiring all the fingers and edges to be sanded down flat. The putty also needed to be sanded off, and my random orbital sander made short work of the process. Honestly this thing might be my favourite tool I've purchased recently. Using the pencil technique, I sanded my way up all from 80 to 240 grit. The glued up drawers also get a similar but less intense sanding process, sanding the top, sides and front also from 80 to 240 grit. With the sanding done, I give everything a wipe down to prepare for the staining process. I'm beginning with this wood pre-stain and doing one coat over everything. I tried a rag but found these foam brushes worked amazingly, they just fall apart sooner than I would have liked. This is the point where I planned to stain the whole project a darker colour. I bought the products, did a bunch of tests, but now that I'm actually at that point, well, I'm unsure. Looking at where it's meant to go, I like how the light colour contrasts with the dark shelves it sits on. It looks especially good in camera which is obviously quite important to me. But what do you think? Should I leave it as is or try staining it something different? Anyways, with the stain done, or rather not done, I can finally put it all together. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, especially considering where it started. There's something about making stuff from rubbish that makes the end result far more satisfying. Functionally, it works great, and visually I like it, but it's far from perfect. Some things I chose to keep, like nail and screw holes from the old plywood, but other imperfections are my own doing, like some areas that were over sanded. Still, it's a great upgrade and set piece, and for my first complex laser project, I think I did alright. But now, my thoughts on the machine. 
Unfortunately, machine reviews on YouTube have the inherent flaw that I got this for free, so it's very easy for me to have a good opinion on it. That being said, I am overall very impressed with the tool. While I'm not a review channel, I have had a laser before this one, so I can contrast with that to explain why this new one impressed me so much. Firstly and most importantly, it's fully enclosed. I now see why many channels only recommend fully enclosed lasers, and that'll be my stance going forward. Just look at this smoke. It's absolutely not worth the health risk to have this all in your workspace. Secondly, the software. I used laser gerbil with my last laser, which is functional but not that powerful. I've never used Lightburn, so I can't make any comment there, but I found the Xtool software to be really easy and fully featured compared to what I had used previously. Considering that it's free to use with Xtool products, I think that's a big plus. Finally, accurate live positioning was such a nice quality of life feature that my last laser lacked as well as automatic material thickness measuring and easy layout boxes. Also some negatives, mostly minor, but again, I got the product for free, remember that. Firstly, the honeycomb grid does not align with anything inside the machine. This just feels like a weird decision and makes the straight edge and measurements far less useful. Secondly, you can't toggle the inbuilt extractor fan in the machine. You can have it stay on for up to 10 minutes, but a button in the software to keep it on or off outside of cutting would be nice. On the topic of buttons, the e-stop is a little more out of the way than I would like. Including an optional wired e-stop would be a nice inclusion. Thirdly, some inconsistencies on the Xtool website about the machine's capabilities. The main website says it can cut 15mm plywood in one pass, but the materials library says it does not recommend cutting even 12mm plywood. In reality, the machine cut the 12mm just fine in two passes. Still perfectly acceptable, but it would be nice for the website to reflect this. Overall, I am very pleased with the machine so I can comfortably make more laser based projects. Lasers beat out 3D printers in many situations, so it's nice to be able to use one without fumigating myself. Thank you to my patrons, and to you, as always, for watching.